All right, welcome back, everybody. Now we're talking about an entirely new, a new idea, a new topic, in which we're going to talk about higher order functions, but lift the hood on them. You've seen them before in your labs, where you've worked with map, keep, and combine, but you've never understood probably how they actually worked. You've seen higher functions in V when we did the demo there, but maybe you didn't really fully get how it works. Today is how you learn it. Okay, the next series of lectures, we're going to deep, deep dive into higher order functions. So we'll talk about the why and the basics of it. So this is a review slide telling you why we use functions in the first place. Here are three different pieces of code. They are draw a square of side 25, draw a square of side 100, and draw a square of side 395. And you say, well, that's fine. Why is that trouble? One of the big ideas in this course is that when you have repeat, not big ideas, but one of the ideas is when you have repeat code, it's really hard to manage, and you have a lot of duplication. You don't want to have duplicated code. So I argued for why you needed functions with this slide, and the answer was you should have an input. You should have a generalization. This is all about abstraction. And abstraction generalization part of that says you should generalize those P three pieces of code into one piece of code that has the parameter that lets you control which, how big the side of the square is. We saw this. We loved it. We moved on. And you say, well, we're done. Now we feel very good. I feel smug. I can walk tall and, and, and walk with my chest held high, thinking, I now can generalize any piece of code. Oh, can you? And by the way, you call it here, you call it by saying draw a square of side, and you put the side 100, OK? So, oh, can you? So here are three clips of code. One says, repeat four, draw a line, 100, turn 90 degrees. Now, we're hard coding the numbers 190 there, but just go with me here. And it draws a square, right? Nothing special. You've seen this before. And I say, you know what? I wouldn't mind drawing a square with a dashed line. So I write a block called draw dashed line. And it takes whatever length it is and draws kind of three equal, it's kind of divides into five pieces and then draws one, first one solid, the next is a gap, I just a jump without pen down, then solid, then a gap, and then solid again. Okay? And that's reasonable. And you say, well, that's the case, then what do I get? And I get this beautiful dashed line. Uh, square. And the third piece of code says, <clears throat> how about a wiggly line? How about kind of a, the drunkard's walk? A like, left and right, I don't know how to get home. Okay. So now that last piece of code is no different except that rather than draw a line or draw a dash line, it's now draw a wiggly line. And if you look carefully, you can see it's a wiggly line. They're all squares, roughly, but they have solid, dashed, or wiggly. How do I generalize that? Without higher order functions, you cannot generalize that. Unless you say, well, put in a number, and if the number is 1, make it straight. If the number is 2, make it down. And that does not work. It doesn't scale. It's not clean. And you have to have these mappings of a number to the function. You know, an if-then, where you do the, these codes are if-then. Right? Repeat 4. If the input kind of line is 1, then do, that's just the wrong thing to do. The right thing to do is I hand you the line drawing routine, and you use that in the middle. Like this. So, line drawer, which is a function. I'm showing you, I'm, rip, I'm ripping open for the first time how a higher order function, high order, a function that takes in functions as data, so a higher order function might actually work. And in Snap, we draw with a little, little shape. There's a little kind of a, it's a Greek symbol for lambda. Okay, that Greek symbol for lambda means is the kind of the programmer's way of it's a secret programmer's way. It's like a secret handshake of saying functions as data are important. Okay? Functions should be first class. To make a function be first class, it means a function can be the input to a function, function can be the output from a function, function can be given a name, and function can be considered in an aggregate, like a list of functions. And we have all those four things in Snap, so functions are first class in Snap. So by putting us in lambda, it's like we have this agreement that that's a function as data there. 100 square is the argument, is the rest of the title, the rest of the signature. Repeat four, run line drawer with input 100. So that means line drawer must be a function of one argument. It's a function that has a domain that has a number, and that's the size of the line you want to draw. Okay? And that could, on any given day, be a straight line, a wiggly line, a dashed line, or any other line you want to pass in. Rather than hard coding case one, case two, case three, this is a much more general solution. It handles any line you want to draw. Well, I came up with a cool idea for a line, a swirly line. Awesome. Pass it in. I don't need to change that piece of code. But if I had the cases, right, case one, I would have to actually edit that to be able to handle your case. So that's the wrong way to go. 
and then run this thing, and then turn 90, okay? And the way you call it, watch this. There's going to be a gray border, and you've seen that because you've used map, you've used keep and use combine, you've seen the gray border as the way we pass in functions as data. Those functions in Snap are either commands, and they're shaped like a cookie cutter shape, like a puzzle piece, or they are reporter blocks, they're shaped ovally or kind of a hex if they're a predicate. So this particular thing, it's a command, I'm passing in a command, and I'm passing in draw a wiggly line with a space. And that space says that's a function of one argument. So how to read that is this is a gray border saying, I'm passing in a function of one argument, it's the wiggly line guy, and guess what? That particular guy's gonna draw a wiggly line. Isn't that beautiful? And if I decide to make a squirrely line guy, we have to write a function of one argument that draws my squirrely line. Oh, it draws it like here, we can decide to draw it together if you want to. And then I'd pass it in and I wouldn't have to actually change the line draw routine. Isn't that beautiful? I would draw a square automatically with that. Isn't that awesome? So that's the motivation behind it. Here's why higher functions are like pregnant fish and sharks. You're like, what? So, here's what I think about this. This is my funny analogy I've came up with in the past. So a normal fish, a function, is like a normal fish. It takes in data, which are not functions. They are, in, what are the data types we know about in SNAP? They are sentences and words. And you know that words are really a smaller case of sentences, but we'll call it for today. Sentences, words, and booleans, trues and falses, and lists. Those are the four data types we have in SNAP. And so fish normally swim around, and they eat, these are like vegetarian fish, and they'll eat some algae or plankton, right? Most fish are the eat other fish, but sometimes they'll eat algae things. So here, we're thinking a fish is the living thing, and data is like an inanimate thing, okay? So they're eating, and algae, I guess, is living. But anyway, the point is they're eating plants, and they kind of, they have an input of plants, and they <clears throat> have an output of kind of plant these stuff, right? Okay, so that's a fish. That's my name. Turn the crank. Input data, output data. Everything you've seen so far is like that. That's not a higher function. You know, like square or join or anything boring that's like that, okay? Well, what's a shark? A shark is somebody like a higher order function. It takes in, what does a fish, what does a shark take in as input? Other fish. Oh, see? So functions take in other functions, okay? So fish are the functions, right? So sharks take in other functions to input, and the output is kind of, you know, like stuff, right? So it's more just data. So it doesn't, it doesn't output another fish. It just outputs there, okay? So that's a shark. So what you've seen so far is map, keep, and combine are like sharks, okay? That's my analogy. Now, but you haven't seen this kind. You haven't seen pregnant fish. A pregnant fish is one in which the input is normal plants, and the output, as I'm swimming away, is another fish. <coughs> So again, the input is algae, plankton, and the output is another fish. I'm swindling, and the fish is output. That's a pregnant fish. So you haven't seen this yet. We're going to do it today, in which a function might take in some numbers or sentences or booleans, and its output is another function. Like, what? Yeah, we can have the output be a new function. That never existed before doesn't even have a name because it's just a normal function. Isn't that kind of cool? We'll show that, how to do that together. And finally, the, four, the, other, the missing corner, pregnant sharks, in which the input might be a function and the output might be a different kind of function. So that's a kind of, a, you know, and that's really cool and that's really funny. We'll see that too today, okay? So fish, pregnant fish, sharks, pregnant sharks.